Hi guys, welcome to part two of this Give Energy install. We'll have a look at the second part of the installation, quick look at the basic look at the commissioning process, um, and then we'll have a look at the app once we've got it set up uh, and have a look at some of the bits of information that you get through the Give Energy app. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and if you want any advice on a similar installation, don't hesitate to get in touch. Right, so we're just getting the battery bracket on the wall now. Um, you can see it's a bigger bracket than uh, for the inverter. Uh, now it's not going to be taking any weight of the battery. It's, um, you know, I've just measured it so that uh, the unit will just lift and slot on and then the feet, the rubber feet will be on the floor. So this is just to stop the battery pack from sort of tipping forward and uh, potentially crushing someone, something, or even worse, you know, Two and a half grams with the battery goes kaboom. Um, now rather than try and chase this flat, these two fixings on this side, you can see I'm actually I'm not using the raw bolts that it came with, I'm just using big big chunky screws. Like I say, it's not taking any weight, it's just to keep the bracket on the wall so that it, when we hook the battery on it doesn't tip forward. So these two fixings on this side, perfectly lined up, uh, it's pretty much vertical it's level um, whereas over this side you can see there's a massive gap there it's stuck on a rock there there's a gap there there's a gap here so what I'm doing rather than waste half a day trying to chase this brick flat just cutting off some little bits of galvanized conduit a slot there and then screw into that and that just sort of packs the wall out a little bit it just means I can get it Nice and straight, a little bit quicker. All right, so we've got quite a lot of length on uh, that current transformer tail, but we're not allowed to cut that down or extend it. Um, there, are your other, there are other devices that you can get if you aren't in this close proximity to the meter tails, but uh, certainly the current transformer that the inverter ships with, uh, you, yeah, you can't cut down these tails. Anyway, you can see if you open the CT, just lift that up. There's L, an arrow, and a K. Now the arrow has to point in the direction of the loads. So in other words, I'm gonna to have to mount it like this, because here's the grid, and here are all the loads of the property. So let's just clamp that on. Now, because this is a Gen 2 battery, first of all, it's got a nice handy connector, which has got uh, everything built into it. So power for the battery and then the battery management thing. But unfortunately, we've only got a Gen 1 inverter here, so we're having to dock to the cable. And then if you're chaining multiple batteries together, I think you can get up to five chained together. Uh, then you can use this second port. We've got an earthing terminal there because the batteries need bonding back to the inverter. The Gen 2 batteries have suitably rated DC MCB built into it. And then we've got some dip switches here, which uh, if you are chaining multiple batteries together, this dictates uh, potentially if this battery is the master or not, and the slave, we can uh, select that using these dip switches. This is an IP67 screw enclosure. So we don't need to do anything else with this battery at this time. So we don't need to open the battery up at all, do any sort of connections in there, save for this earthing terminal. Right, so the meter has got 230 volt supply. We've got the current transformer clamped around the tails. Uh, next up, this needs a, a data connection back to the underneath of the inverter. Um, so for this, we could just use Cat6 cable, just a couple of twisted pairs out of that. So let's get that in now. What I've just had to do here um, is turn the battery on, flip the MCB on, uh, the MCB on, and the advice of uh, 
the Give Energy support team because um, there's no indication on these fancy new Gen 2 cables as to which terminal is positive and which is negative. When you chop the end off, there's also no indication on the cable itself. So I've just got my voltage meter just to prove that this is the positive terminal, this is the negative terminal. Apparently if you connect those up wrong, there may be some damage to the battery. So I just wanted to double check that before making the final connections. And you see, we start to fit these covers with stuffing glands or compression glands already built in uh, just to house the bare connections. So we've got one here, which I'm going to use for the, you know, incoming supply. One slightly annoying thing because this is a Gen 1 inverter and I've had to adapt the cable. Um, the actual cables to the battery and the battery management cable run in that in that one cable in this flexible conduit. And because the terminals for the battery and the terminals for the battery management are located in two different places, I had to split the conduit, revealing these in a cause. This is double insulated, so that's not a problem. But what I'm going to have to do here is just got a bit of an off cut, a flexible conduit. I'm just going to slice that down the middle, wrap it around this, and just tape it up so it's not quite as beautiful as I would like, but it's necessary. And I've just you see a bit of gal banding just to support that cable as best I can when these power cables and uh, data cables go off in different directions. Right, so we're pretty much ready to fire this up. Um, <clears throat> let's just double check our connections. We've got the power coming from the grid and obviously so that the battery uh, can discharge as well. Uh, we've got data coming in from the meter. See what the house is using just plugged in the Wi-Fi dongle. Uh, we've got battery management connection and then power from the battery. We're not using the PV connections. This is just a way for the customer to try and balance the cost of their energy usage throughout the day. And then finally, we've got the inverter bonded to the battery or vice versa. Right, we're in the Give Energy Cloud that you gain access to when you become an installer. Uh, so first thing I need to do is create a new customer account. I need to register the dongle with that customer's account. Let's get on with that now. Right, so everything's juiced up. Uh, there was just a bit of messing around to do with getting the dongle and therefore the uh, the inverter uh, to recognize the network. Um, so these dongles work on a 2.4 gigahertz network. Um, there's a specific section in the Give Energy app for engineers and it allows you to potentially go in and, and use the app to connect, first of all, to the dongle, uh, then to search for Wi-Fi um, Wi-Fi networks, but it wasn't picking up this uh, this this customer's network. It's got a uh, Google Home uh, mesh network. It runs on 5G and 2.4 uh, gigahertz simultaneously. I've got great signal down here, but the, the dongle wasn't uh, registering the fact that that was present. So what you can do is using your laptop, you can log on to the the back end um, and actually searching through this method allowed me to, uh, to to find the network. The problem being I think that um, the 2.4 gigahertz aspect isn't strong in the basement so the signal is quite weak but it seems to have connected now. Right so now we can go ahead and commission the unit using the Give Energy portal. So We've created the customer account, we've assigned the dongle to it, the inverter's online, 
and now we can start the commissioning process. This is a fairly uh, self-explanatory process. You just have to punch in the serial numbers uh, for all of the different devices in the system. Uh, it will go through, it will update the firmware, it will configure the system for you. Right, so we installed this um, a little while ago now. Um, so we've got a bit of data to look at through the app. So this is what the app looks like. This is the front page um, here. You can see uh, the greenhouse in the middle shows the current consumption in watts of the property. The battery indicator on the left uh, that shows whether the battery has been charged or whether it's feeding back into the house or in this case feeding back into the grid as well. You see it's feeding a little bit back into the, into the grid. This is what the red icon indicates. So if we click on the battery percentage below, let's just click on that. This gives us some historical data on how the battery's been charging and discharging. So as I mentioned, this customer is on the Octopus Go energy tariff, which means they get cheap electricity between the hours, I think, of half past 12, half past four in the morning. Um, they've also got an EV, which they charge uh, during those hours as well. Um, let's have a look at, for argument's sake, let's go for Thursday the 8th. There we go, that's a good indicator. So between the hours of 12 and half 4, you see that's when the battery gets charged. And then a couple of peaks in the morning, maybe breakfast has been cooked or whatever. Not much during the day because they're out at work and out at school. And then once we get to sort of tea time-ish, there's peak demand again. Um, if we move over to the next day, let's have a look at that. So that's the tenth. So that's a Saturday. So you see, there's a lot more peak, a lot more usage during the day there. So the battery will discharge quicker. Now, give or take, an average household, rough rule of thumb, might use somewhere between. 10 and 15 kilowatt hours a day. Um, that's obviously dependent on if you've got electric showers, heat pumps, induction hobs. You know, if you've got gas central heating, um, nothing too heavy, current using wise pieces of equipment, then a 10 kilowatt hour battery uh, might last you the best part of the day. So if you're buying in from the grid, for argument's sake, five, six, seven pence a kilowatt hour between the hours of half 12, half four, and then discharging it, you're gonna be saving a lot of money during the day. In fact, I think this customer did a calculation, I think he's saving about three pounds 50 a day, which doesn't sound a lot, but obviously, you know, 3.5 times, let's say 31 days, or let's, well, that's a conservative estimate, 30 days, you're looking at a saving of about £100 a month. Uh, and so if the cost of this was 5000 divided by 100, 50 months, uh, you know, 50 divided by 12, it's just over four years, the payback on this setup. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier on, I think the cost of this setup has gone up a little bit, but nevertheless, um, you know, yeah, payback period of about four years. Obviously, I'm not factoring in there um, the difference between buying energy in at four pence and buying energy in. I think my tariff at the moment is about 30 pence. So you'd maybe have to do a bit of a calculation there. But yeah, just a little over four years for the payback time. I don't think that's too bad. I think off the top of my head, again, I haven't got this spec sheet in front of me, but I think these batteries supposed to last about 15 to 20 years so you know you've got uh, a lot of money saving after that four years as well this shows uh, peak power so generation obviously there's nothing there we've not got any solar panels um, we've got consumption of the property we've got battery charge and discharge so when it's charging you see that dips below 
the zero line. When it's discharging, it goes above the zero line. And you see how that sort of marries up with when the house is consuming as well. Uh, and then we've got grid import. So that shows you when we're importing from the grid. So that's the power graph. Now this is, we've got the energy graph. So this will show you the energy consumption in terms of kilowatt hours. Um, now, let's just have a look at this over a month, let's say January. So, um, we've got lots of different pieces of information that we can look at here. Let's look at this one. So, this is the total grid import. So, this is 909, well, 909 and a half, give or take, kilowatt hours this month. It shows you how much the home has used directly and uh, how much has been used to charge the batteries. So let's just do a quick bit of maths here. Right, so I've just uh, pulled up the current Octopus Go rates. Now between 4.30 in the morning and half past midnight, it's 41.63 pence per kilowatt hour. During the low rate, section is 12 pence a kilowatt hour so let's just do some calculations so the house has used in total whether that's the home or the battery 909 kilowatt hours so if we do 909 times let's call it 42 no 0.42 so that's 380 pounds on electricity at the full rate, no battery storage, uh, if we're just using electricity between 4.30 in the morning and half past midnight. So option one, no batteries, uh, no lower rate, we're looking at £380 a month for the electricity. Now let's do second calculation which is 627 times Point four two, so it's two hundred and sixty three, two hundred and sixty three, and then we'll do two hundred eighty two point five, call it times point one two, so it's thirty thirty four, call it. So two hundred and sixty three plus thirty four is two hundred and ninety seven. Three hundred eighty minus two hundred ninety-seven, eighty-three, eighty-three pounds. So in January, based on these current rates, I'm not sure if this is the customers' rates that they're signed up for. I think those are slightly lower, but nevertheless, um, the customer would have saved on these rates eighty-three pounds in January compared with what it would have cost if they hadn't had that, hadn't, hadn't had the batteries installed. So that just gives you a little flavour of how much money they're saving. Now, what we can do is we can monitor your power usage ahead of time using an energy meter to accurately spec the size of battery that you might need. So these guys in January used, give or take, about 30 kilowatt hours a day. They've got a nine and a half kilowatt hour battery. So that's accounting for about a third of their usage.